Hello, my loves. Today, we will be bringing a UI made in Figma to Unity for extended reality. Now, a lot of you wanted this video for a while, and it's been a minute since my last video, so I appreciate your patience. But before I jump into Figma, I wanted to announce that in the past couple months, I've been spending all my free time crafting a Discord server focused around XR design. And if you're interested in free XR design labs, resources, and creative networking, this is the place for you. So if you want to join and or learn more, link is in the description. And as always, if you like this and if it tickles your fancy, like, subscribe, bell thing, and let's go. Okay, to start, let's go to Figma, let's go to the community tab, and let's type in um, XR Design System 1.1, 1.0, and let's duplicate this shit. Now, the link to this is in the description, so feel free to just go there or search it up yourself, whatever you want. So now that we're here, um, I want to let you know, first and foremost, that this thing will change over time. I just wanted to put something out um, as quickly as possible to get everyone started. So um, with no further ado, let's jump into the foundations page. So here's a bunch of templates from Google Daydream. So we have, again, we have the field of view attention areas, we have the horizon line and comfort zones, and we have the central vision. But each one of these concepts will likely be covered in other videos, but I just wanted to call out the tools I provided you. Also, a huge shout out to my bud Albert. He crafted I crafted a rad VR design system on Figma and it's helped me out a lot. So thanks again, buddy. And that link is down below as well if anyone wants to see it. Now let's dive into um, a page I specifically made for this tutorial called Figma to Unity tutorial. And inside of here, we have a bunch of crafted UI that I created just for this tutorial. So if we come down here, let's see what's going on. So if we come down here, we have a frame of 1920 by 1080. And I have chosen this resolution specifically because the main headset on the market right now is the Quest 2. And this roughly is around that resolution. And so some of you may be thinking, Daniel, I thought you said we're not designing for resolution, we're designing for field of view. And first and foremost, you're right but we need to understand what is projecting the world around us. And that's why I'm using this frame. So um, how do we start designing for field of view? Well, that's a good question. So if we come in here in this mainframe, I have this visual checks area. If you toggle on attention areas, and if I just toggle off um, this frame right here, it's 30 by 30 degrees. And I call this kind of like the golden circle of comfort. And this golden circle, um, our eyes can easily move around 30 degrees in each direction. And this both reduces the amount of strain um, we put on our users to look at things within our world. But it also helps us understand, you know, where people can physically see. Okay, now that we have everything laid out here, we have a significant decision we need to make. And that is how we want to export things into Unity. Now, you could take this whole frame and export this into Unity and just use that. But fundamentally, it's going to be a lot harder to create depth in your scene and actually iterate on your design in Unity if you do it that way. The second option is we can take every one of these assets and export them individually to Unity and then build up our frame from there. But the problem with that is, is that fundamentally, we're not going to be able to edit these assets when we're inside of Unity. And I think part of designing properly within XR is being able to play within your medium. So we're gonna go with option three. And option three is essentially, I'm exporting just the base elements of this panel. And again, I have the avatar, I have the icons, I have the image, and I have these three, or I guess I have these six rounded rectangles. So why are these rectangles white? Well, I'll explain those in a second. But right now, let's just grab all of them and export all of these at 3x PNGs. So why 3x? Well, because we, we wanna reduce the amount of aliasing when we start building inside of Unity. So I'm gonna export all of these, um, these 12 layers. I'm gonna to go to my desktop. You can do this inside of your Unity project too, it's up to you. I'm gonna create a new folder called Tut. Now that we have all of these exported, let's dive into Unity. Okay, so now that I'm in Unity, we need to import all of these assets to start building with them. So what we're gonna do now is, um, inside of my assets folder, I usually do a couple of different things. First and foremost, I'm gonna create a brand new folder by going to assets, right clicking, go to create, and then we're gonna go to folder. And I'm just gonna go underscore um, imported. And why did I put an underscore? Well, an underscore will bring up all of the stuff that we want up to the very top next to the assets so we don't have to search through them. Now, how do I import everything? Now, we can do a couple of different ways. We can go to assets up here in the top left. We can go to import new asset. If we go to our desktop, oh my God. No, that's the, if we go to our desktop, uh, I can go to the tutorial and I can just grab everything and import. 
So as you see right here, we have all of our assets. And before we start building with these, we need to do a couple different things. The first thing we need to do is we are gonna need to convert all of these into sprites. So before we do that, there's a couple of things we need to install. So right now I'm in Unity 2021.3.9 F1. If I go to Window, if I go to Package Manager, and right now I'm in Packages in Unity Registry. So if I scroll all the way up, um, right now it says 2D, so we have seven packages here. I'm just gonna install those. And this includes the pixel perfect, the sprite shape, 2D sprites and stuff like that. Awesome, now that's installed, we can change all of our stuff into sprites. Awesome, now that we have those done, right now we have all of these PNGs. Now, in order for us to use these within our scene, we're gonna have to convert these to sprites. So I'm just gonna select all of them by holding, I'm gonna click the first one, hold down shift, and now I have them all um, selected. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go down here to Sprite 2D to, and UI, and I'm gonna go all the way down and I'm gonna apply it. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all of these, and right here it says Sprite Mode. I'm just gonna go to Single, and right now the mesh type is tight, and um, let's apply those. So now that we have all these applied, you're gonna see these little play buttons and you can see exactly what's inside of there. Okay, now that we have that done, um, these rounded rectangles right here, we're gonna wanna change the slicing on them. And that's basically because we wanna have an expandable rounded rectangle container. So if I go to this first one, if I go to Sprite Editor, I can then, uh, if you see right here, we're gonna cut. So I'm gonna bring this over. And let's just say 64, right? So now I'm just gonna go to, you know, I have 64 here, 64 here, 64 here, 64 here, right? And the reason why I'm doing this is because when it starts stretching, we wanna retain these rounded rectangles. So I'm gonna hit apply and I'm gonna do the rest. I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of our rounded rectangles. So. Okay, now that we have all of our assets converted, let's start building our panel up. Now, in order for us to actually have 2D UI inside of Unity, it needs to be rendered somehow, and that's why we will always need to use a canvas to do that. So, let's right click, let's go to UI, let's go to canvas. Now, we're gonna have to make a bunch of changes to this in order for it to actually look proper. So the first thing we're gonna do over here in our inspector, we're gonna switch from screen space overlay to world space. And um, we're gonna zero out the position. Now that it's zeroed out, we still can't really see the size of this thing. So if we zoom out, as you see, this thing is absolutely massive. So we're gonna have to change the size of both the panel and the scale. So let's start with the scale. So because this panel is the size of our world to a certain extent, let's switch this out to be one one thousandth of the size. So zero, zero, one. And I click this little link right here on the newer Unity to make it um, a little bit easier to change all of these. If you're on an older version, you're gonna have to change all these manually. So the next thing we wanna do is change the size of our panel, not the scale, but the size. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the size of our panel, which is 1096 by 784. So I'm gonna do this to 1096 by 784. Cool. Now, if I hit F, our panel is inside of our stairs. So let's bring it out. Now you can position this in any way you want. Um, we will position this with our avatar stuff maybe in another video, but right now I'm just gonna get in a place where I can actually accurately see it. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to get a proper visual of this. So I'm gonna go over here. I um, switch to this orientation and I'm just gonna hit front and this is gonna bring into ISO mode. So right now, as you see this rectangular line right here, let me see if I can just make this a little bit smaller for all of us. This um, rectangular line right here is our canvas and nothing is being rendered in it so far. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a panel to the back of this. But before we do that, actually, let's change this to, you know, change the name of this and I'm um, on my PC I'm hitting F2 and I'm gonna hit and call this panel canvas and inside of this panel canvas I'm gonna right click I'm gonna go to UI and I'm gonna go to panel now right now this panel side background is this um, opaque white and we can change all the attributes right here um, in the inspector so um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna switch my opacity this alpha channel to hundred percent and then let's go back to our Unity and see this color of this. So I'm just gonna grab this um, hex value, which is 3E3E40. 
go back and I'm just gonna change the color here. And the first thing you'll probably notice is that there's no rounded corners. In order to make that change, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna minimize this here. Now I'm gonna take the largest rounded rectangle um, filled canvas I have, which is this 24 dim filled. I'm gonna make sure our this panel is there and I'm just gonna drag it from filled into background. And as you see, we have some rounded corners, but if we look here, the rounded corners of this are, they're a little bit sharper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this pixels per unit multiplier to two. But if you don't see this pixels per unit multiplier, it's because you did not either convert your object or you didn't slice it. So make sure you, if you run into that issue to make sure that you slice it properly. Now, one other thing I'm gonna do is this panel right here, um, for some reason it always faces the opposite direction I want in a lot of these things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this rotation to 180. You're not gonna be able to notice anything now, but that's fine. Next, let's just change this. I'm gonna hit F2. I'm gonna kinda call this panel, um, let's just say panel um, back. Awesome. So the next thing we need to build is this nav bar right here. So let's right click on our panel and add another panel. So I go to UI, panel. As you see right now, this is filling up our panel back. And I'm just gonna call this nav panel back, right? Now, we want this to pin to the top, bottom, and like left of this object. So before we start sizing everything up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this stretch section up here, and I'm gonna hold down Alt-Shift, and we're just gonna click this one right here. As you see, it brings over all of our anchors and our pivot. Awesome. So now that we have that done, let's open this up and see what the size of this is. 784 by 352. So if I change this to 352, that's 252. If we zoom in, it is not being masked by the master, right? And even has this little rounded rectangle right here. So I'm just, first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this background to none. So it has that sharp edge instead of that rounded one by default. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my panel back and I'm just gonna add a component and I'm type in mask, dump that on there. And as you see, it's starting to mask it properly. Awesome possum. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our panel back, our nav panel back, I should say. And let's see what the nav panel back is. The hex is 252526, so I'm gonna copy that. Go in here, change that, change the alpha, and it's starting to come along pretty nicely. So now that we have that done, let's start building out our panel over here. So to start that, let's go to, um, let's start with our avatar of Tina Taylor. So what I'm gonna do is inside of my panel back, I'm gonna right click, go to UI, and I'm gonna go to raw image. And the size of this is 104 by 104. So I'm gonna change this to 104 by 104. Cool. And let's do the same thing um, to the top right there. And the position Y, if we look right here, she is 30, it should be 32. So I'm gonna change this position is 30 to say negative 32 okay it's more or less what we desire now inside of this block right here we can add our avatar if we desire so let's just do that and there she is in all her glory is it tina tina taylor good old tina taylor okay so now that tina taylor is positioned at the top let's just change this to um let's just call this avatar image and maybe the next thing I want to do now is add some type to this so what I want to do is either in the panel back or in another empty I can add her name which is Tina Taylor so what I'm gonna do is it's in this panel back I'm just gonna do this for now I'm sure there's better ways to organize this but it's fine for now um, I'm gonna go to UI and then I'm gonna go to text mesh pro and um, if I call this Tina Taylor. Awesome. Now let's just, I'm just gonna switch this to center aligned. And right now, if we look at this right here, Tina Taylor, we're using um, a, we're using circular STD and we're having it at 24 by 24. So if I switch this from 36 to 24, 
that's kind of what we need. But we also need fundamentally, and I'm just going to center this out, is that we need the correct type. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import my fonts. Now you can use whatever fonts you want. So instead of my imported, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag in a folder that has my circular STD. And these are all of my fonts that I want to use, right? Now, in order for us to use Text Mesh Pro um, to have more crisper text, what we're going to want to do is we're going to go to Window, we're going to go to Text Mesh Pro, and then we're going to put Font Asset Creator. And I'm just going to drop this right here and then maybe even drop it down here. So now that I have this Font Asset Creator, let's just look at this real quick. We're going to want, if we look at Tina Taylor here, we're using Medium. So let's just add that shall we so let's i have my medium right here and what this is going to do it's going to take this font and then create a sprite out of every one of the characters right you can change all of these things right here from custom size to everything if you want but we're not going to mess with that today so um so now that i i'm going to save this as um i'm going to go to imported circular std yeah that's fine and i'm just going to save that and as you see right here, it created this font for us. So let's go back to this text. And I'm just going to drag this into the liberty right there. And then we have our type, right? Super crisp, super nice. Awesome. Now I'm going to change this type to, again, avatar name. Awesome. Now what I want to do is I can either drag this up manually, right? Or I can pin it. Now. This is because these things are going to act together there. This is probably where I would want to create either another canvas or an empty to house this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on panel back. I'm going to create an empty. I'm going to call this avatar. And as you see right now, um, the avatar is dead set in the middle. So I'm just going to drag the image and the avatar name into that. So. Right now, if I move this, it's going to move both of these, which is kind of crappy, right? So why don't I just do this? So right now I have my avatar. I'm going to do exactly what I did before. I'm going to have this pinned negative 30, right? This is kind of where I wanted it. And then I'm going to drag um, Tina and her name inside of there. And I am going to go to my av my image of Tina and I'm going to change up my position to zero. Zero her out. So now she should be pretty much dead set there. Oh yeah, we want negative 32. Now with the name, um, I'm going to probably want to change this to zero. And then like I, we may just want to move it down manually or whatever you want to do. Awesome. So now that we have that, this avatar nice and centered and what we want um we can that is done now we can make this a prefab kind of like a component if we want so we can change things all like so we can manipulate this whenever we desire so if we want to if we want to turn tina into frank we can just do a simple image swap and change out the type but we're not going to do that today um what we're going to do now if we look back at our canvas is let's start creating um the layout of these buttons right here, right? So there is no rounded rectangles on these buttons. Um, this is just a simple 64 height button and we have type inside of them. Um, and the color right here is one, two, one, two, one, two. So I'm gonna copy that. And I have these little chevrons. So let's start building those out. And then we can start learning about prefabs in that way. So what I'm gonna do now is inside of this panel back, um, I'm gonna, so this nav panel, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create button text mesh pro. Cool. Now, so the reason why I'm using a button is because it's just giving me a bunch of stuff off the bat. So if we look in here in the hierarchy, if I open up button, it's just basically all this is, is a like rectangle um, with an image placed inside of it. And then inside of the button, there is a text mesh or text mesh pro. So what I want to do now inside of this button, I'm just going to call this, um, let's just call this, or we can call this like nav button. Now what we can do is inside this nav button, 
And if I go back up here, we can hold on Alt Shift and I'm just gonna do that, right? And now that is gonna be the size of its parent container. Now, what's the size of this button? This, the size of this button is 64, as I said before. And I'm sort of just gonna hit 64. Awesome. So now that I have this contained, I am just gonna, instead of this UI sprite right now for this button, I'm just gonna switch this to none. Okay, so now we have this set. We're gonna probably need to add a couple different things. We need to add two icons, essentially. Um, one is this house icon, star, um, searching icon, and then these chevrons. So let's add, let's start adding those. Let's add, um, so if I right click on nav button, go to UI, and I'm just gonna go to raw image. And this raw image is roughly 48 by 48. So I'm just gonna switch that. And I'm just gonna like move this over to the left. And then from the left, I gave it a 12. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it to 12. And for this, let's go back to our imported and let's find this home icon and let's dive it and dump it in. And this home icon is not gonna, we're not gonna be able to see it right now for obvious reasons. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the button is the same size, which is one, two, one, two, one, two. So let's change that to one, two, one, two, one, two. And there is our little house. It's a cute little house, isn't it? Cool. Now, what I can do also is like, I'm just gonna call this like um, button icon for now, right? And probably would want a better name for it later if you're gonna use it somewhere else. And I can just duplicate this. And on this one, um, I'm just gonna call this one F2 Chevron. And I'm just gonna do the exact same thing by just kind of repin it over here. And right now it, its position is, should be about four, yes. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the position of that. So let me see, negative four, awesome. Now let's change out this type. So this type in this button is home. We need to switch out the type right now. So let's go back into our circular. Let's just dump in our medium. I think my typeface, what color? I'm using gray 30, which is... Cool. Let's just get this thing kind of aligned the way we desire. So if I look at this type, it's fine right there. For now, this is fine. And you know, maybe we even want to switch this from centered to left. But right now, um, this button, uh, its type is not accurate to what we have here. So do you have any idea before I tell you how to change the type? Okay, if you haven't figured it out, what we're gonna do is inside of this font asset creator, we're gonna add another source. So um, right now I think we are using book. So we're gonna drop book in there. We're gonna generate our assets and then we're gonna save. And this should be book, PSDF, it pops up. Awesome, let's drag, let's drag that in there. And there it is. So now we have our button. Okay, so this is cool, but we don't wanna have to recreate our button every time. So if we basically look at this right here, we are still missing our underline, but we have three of these, right? So do I wanna create three separate buttons that I have to change every time if I wanna make a tweak? Probably not. So what we're gonna do is uh, with this, this nav um, panel, let's go inside of there again, sorry. This nav button, um, inside of my assets area right here, let me expand that. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to create folder and I'm gonna call this um, prefabs. Awesome. Now prefabs are kind of like components in Figma where you can just create something and update it and reuse it and update it at will. It's not necessarily as advanced in many ways as Figma, but it will do. So if I look at this nav button, if I drag it into prefabs, now it's a prefab button, right? So this, this little blue square is a prefab button, right? So if I click this little arrow right here, now I'm in edit prefab mode. Now, if I go back with this little arrow up here and I do the same thing here, it's gonna make it a little bit harder to see because it's just gonna be guessing exactly where you are in space. And right now there's no master canvas. So I'm gonna leave that. And I'm just gonna go here so it stays perfectly nice and neat. And inside of here, I wanna add that underline. So I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go into 
making sure I'm right clicking here. Nav button, UI. So let's do it. Let's just use another panel for now. And again, I'm just gonna remove, scroll all the way up. Remove the rounded rectangle they give us by default. And then I'm gonna change the stretching to like this right here. And then I think the height was like two. And let, and what's the color of it? It should be gray 30, which is F B F A F F. Cool, now we're cooking with gas. And change the opacity. Okay, there we go. So as you see, we have this lovely little button here that we can reuse all the time. Now, this button is around 30 or should be around 32 from Tina Taylor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this up manually. Now, if you're gonna be designing this for developers, you probably wanna get this all exact. So I'm gonna hit um, Control D and I'm just gonna, oops, and I duplicated that. Control D. And there we go. We have button, 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 button. Awesome. Now we can dive into this button if you want and then go to button icon and I can change this. If we go back to our assets, I can change this to, I think it was star. There it is. And then if we go to this other one, change this to search. Awesome. Now, like any good designer, <laughs> is that you need to keep this stuff tidy. So let's just name this home nav button. And we'll call this one uh, star nav button. And we'll call this one. Okay, so now, okay, now that I renamed them, we all know exactly what's going on. And the side panel is essentially complete. Now you may see all of these giant blue things. That's um, part of our, in our gizmos. So for t for today, I'm just gonna turn off those so I don't have to stare at those big blue things staring us in the face. Okay, now that we have our nav done, let's focus on the middle section, the main content. So let me switch over to Figma and see what we have here. Now, when we did the avatar earlier on, later we added an empty to make sure that everything was connected and we can move it around and manage it a little bit more. Um, but we did that after the fact, which takes a lot more time if you just think it out initially. So if we look right here, um, what we want to do inside of this container is that we really want to have an empty or some kind of grouping that allows us to manage this a little bit easier. So if we look right here, um, we have essentially an image, text, and two buttons, primary and secondary. So I know that we're probably gonna to wanna to create a container that will house everything, but we also may wanna have a container that will just house the type in the text. So let's figure out how to do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is inside of my panel canvas, let's start with creating a container for all of this, right? So my, here's my panel back, and I'm, what I'm inside my panel back, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna create an empty, and I'm just gonna call this empty, I don't know, um, content um, container. So let's take a look at the size of this container right now. So it's at 680 by 720. So let's make that change. So, six, so 680 by 720. Awesome. Now um, let's pin this to the right. And they, we have a margin of 32 around. So let's change this X position to negative 32. And now we have that margin around everything and it looks pretty good. So the next thing we're gonna want, so okay, so after that, what we're gonna do is probably make a container for the text. So let's go ahead and do that and I'm gonna save it. And I am gonna add another container in here. So another empty, I'm just gonna call this um, image text container. Okay, so now what I'm gonna wanna do is probably pin this to the top, so shift alt click. So now it is exactly at the top. And you know, we're probably going to want to make this stretch across as well. So let's just do the top stretched as you see right here. And that looks pretty good. So let's go into here and let's see what we got. So this container is 555 high, switch the height to this to 555. So now we want to add our image. 
Okay, now this is when it gets kind of weird and tricky because if we want to make this more reusable and tweak, say, this image later, we can always keep importing different images and swapping them out. But maybe we want to actually just be able to swap out images live while we're creating something instead of having to keep on exporting new images with this rounded corner. So inside of this text container, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to UI, and I'm going to go to Panel. What I want to do is um, maybe I'm going to pin this again to the top and I'm going to make the width of this thing. What is this? The width. This is 680 by 360. So, so the width is fine. And then this is 360. So this is going to be the size of our image. Now we want to make this have rounded corners, of course. So let's us let us grab this panel and let's grab our 24 dim, throw it back there. Let's change this of course, to around, let's just say six. Awesome. Now, inside of this panel, let's right click and let's maybe just call this image container. And inside of this panel, let, let's add a raw image. So let's go to UI, raw image. And let's just make this like fill. And then, um, Inside of this, we can grab our image and drop it in. Now, it doesn't have rounded corners, so how do we fix that? Can you remember? So what, we, what we're going to do is we have this image container that is a panel, and we're just going to add a mask. So as you see right here, our mask is, a, is like, eh, yeah, it's pretty damn close to perfect to what we had before. So now this means if we ever have another image, we can always swap it out. It's pretty sweet, right? Okay. Okay, so now we have the image container and the text container. So now let's let's add the text. So if I right click, I go to UI, I go to Text Mesh Pro. Um, sweet. Now let's see let's see how we want to pin it. Um, so right now I have I'm pinning it from the bottom. So now let's grab this text. I'm gonna copy that. Paste in here. Oops. And oops. Let's go to our text and let's actually we probably want to make this, you know, stretch as much as possible. And as you see right now, um, it is quite big. So we're going to probably want to reference this, which is um, 20. So let's grab the text again. Awesome. And I'm just going to drag it up for now. So it was 20 by 24. So if we go down to line, we can add the 24. And everything is fitting, you know, relatively nice and tidy together. And um, now we want to change the, the type. So I'm going to grab this text. And then I'm going to go to, um, I think it was medium. And I'm just going to drag that here. Well, it's uh, a little bit out of our range. It's fine. Okay, so now we have the text in the image. So if I minimize this, I can grab this and move it wherever I want within this scene. We can pin it. If I want to pin this at the bottom, we can do it at the bottom. If we want to do it to the right, we can do it to the right, top, whatever you want to do. So now that's done. Next, let's save it. <laughs> I've had to record this many times because of me not saving. So what I want to do now is in my content container, let's start adding our buttons. Um, let's just add a um, UI button and let's just automatically let's just bring this um, let's open this up let's do shift alt and click down the bottom right here now the button is stuck at the bottom r right and I know um, this is gonna be probably 64 height and so if I look at the width of this it's at like 167 so um, that's not gonna be I think 160 is fine um, 160 like or 168 would be fine as well so as you can see it's just gonna grow from that side and let's look at the color of that button and the color is one two one two one two so let's just add that cool and let's look at this type right here I think it's gonna be medium so I'm just gonna grab it and throw it in and here is the type color it's FBFAFF -F -F -F. and I'm gonna just flip that in there now, this is our primary button. The rounded corners isn't exactly what I want. 
So it's using the default UI sprite that they keep on shoving on us, shoving in our mouths, which I don't like it. So maybe I'm just gonna bring in uh, this 12 dim uh, filled button or this film rectangle into here. And then I'm gonna probably adjust this up to around six. Okay, now just call this primary button. And now that we have a primary button, let's make sure that our type is actually 20. Let's just make sure everything looks good. Is that 24? So now that we have our primary button done, what we're gonna wanna do is take this primary button and make a prefab of it so we can use it over and over again. So I'm just gonna drag this. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I drag this primary down here and we can also use this primary button as a template for our secondary. So how are we gonna do that? Well, let's just duplicate this right now, this primary button with um, control D on PC. And I'm just gonna basically eyeball it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna change this to secondary button. And I'm just gonna drag this down. I can create a prefab variant or another original prefab for the sake of this is just make another original prefab. So now that I have my secondary button, let's just open this up. Okay, so now that we've created our secondary button prefab, let's take a look of how it looks inside of here. As you see, we have this strong like stroke around this button as a secondary. So we're gonna wanna recreate that. And this is when we're gonna be using um, a different rectangle to make these buttons. Like, especially when you start wanting strokes and stuff like that, you're gonna wanna use um, something that is a little bit closer to the size of the button so we can keep the same um, thickness of the outline. So right here I have this rounded rectangle eight dim. So I'm gonna grab that and I'm just gonna put it into there. Okay, so right now we have it at six. I'm just gonna bring this down to around, let's just say three. And I think that's roughly the size we desire from here. And this is gonna be white, the same as, as this button. So if we grab this text, copy that, go to my stroke, and there we go. So if we get out of this prefab mode, there is our primary or secondary button. Cool. Now, right now, this thing is pretty damn close to done. Now, you may want to start testing it out and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's cool. But um, so in order to take a look at this, um, let me get out of this perspective. Let's, let's go into this perspective view instead of this ISO view. And I'm going to import a character to see exactly how close to where I want this, right? So I'm gonna go to a package manager and I'm gonna go into my personal project, like, sorry, my assets. And it's gonna load all of my assets. And I have this dude right here called Banana Man. And um, I will link him in the description if you wanna use him. So I'm just gonna import my Banana Man right now. So he is relatively lightweight. Um, and if I type in here, banana, um, I'm gonna grab my banana man. And as you see, this panel is a little bit too close to the ground for my banana man. So I'm gonna grab my panel and bring it up here to eye length. Cool. So that looks pretty darn close. This is roughly one meter. So I am going to bring my banana man to look like this. And so he's exactly roughly one meter away. Let me put on my headset and show you what I got. Okay, as you see, okay, as you can see right now, I'm about a meter away and everything looks pretty good. Um, this area right now is definitely the clear, the cleanest right now. And if I want to turn my head and view this information, everything seems relatively comfortable. But as you see right now, when I point my Raycast at things, it's not actually highlighting anything I'm actually pointed at. So we can fix that real quick. Okay, so in order for this to actually work, we're gonna have to add a component. And this is um, brought in by, I believe the XRI toolkit, which is again in a video linked below and above. And I'm gonna hit add component. I'm gonna add, look for tracked device Raycaster. And actually also because I'm gonna sit down, I'm just gonna bring down my panel, this panel canvas to something like this. A little bit easier for me to get to. And I'm just gonna hide our banana man. 
Yeah, let me hit play. As you see right now, uh, my Raycast is not red anymore, it's white. And if I highlight, it's the slightest of the slight hover on all of these objects. Okay, this is Daniel, the editor speaking. Now this puppy is really super long. So here is a preview of what you can do with some simple state adjustments that are built right into the buttons inside of Unity. Okay, let's end this bad boy. Sweet, we did it. Now, while this took a while, the more you do it, the faster you'll become, I promise. That said, there are some tools like Figma Converter on the Unity Asset Store, but it's roughly $25. And if you want a much more powerful GUI for UI design, there's a $125 plugin called Nova that really rips and I can't live without it now. But besides that, how did you feel about this video? Do you want to learn more about design theory around depth, ergonomics, and field of view? Have you used this video to build out your own XR UI? If so, share it with the XR Discord community. We would love to talk about it, critique it, and if you need ideas or educational resources is the place to get it. Again, links down below. And if you like this soccer, give me some love with a like, subscribe, and bell thing. And until next time, plus minus my loves. Take care.